not even gonna die. Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to Popsicle Frog Knits. My name is Brooke and today we have a podcast episode. This is episode number six. I remember to look at what number it is because I never remember to do that. So this is number six and today we're going to be going over everything that I knit in October. So I got quite a bit of stuff. I've been pretty busy. Um, lots of knitting, lots of finished objects, lots of whips. I'm kind of all over the place with this. Um, but I am super excited to share everything with you. It's been a little while since I made a video, but I am excited to make this one and I have some fun stuff planned for November and December. So stay tuned for that. So let's get into it. We're going to start with what I'm wearing, which is this beautiful sweater that I am obsessed with. It's the last sweater that I finished and it is the Harlow Sweater V-neck by Kadri and it is knit in Sorella let me see. Sorella Yarns Classic DK, which is 100% superwash merino, and it is in the color Reputation from the Taylor Swift Heiress collection. Uh, Reputation is my favorite. I love it. It's Reputation Midnight's Folklore. And then also the songs from The Vault of 1989 Taylor's version. Those songs are fantastic. I've been listening to them on repeat, and I love them. Love Taylor. Love her. I won't harp on that too much, but I will in a little bit actually, because I have some exciting whips going uh, or an exciting whip going that I'm super excited about that I started this morning. And so, yes, I knit a size medium and the modifications I made, so I ended up picking up a couple more stitches for the V-neck just because that's how it worked out as I was picking up and I wasn't going to undo it because I'd already redone it once and I picked up like four extra stitches because it is two by two rib. So I needed a multiple of four to be able to get the correct ribbing. Um, and so yeah, it has two by two rib details on the cuffs, the body and the neck. It has a split hem, which I think is a little bit hard to see because I'm wearing black jeans. Um, but let's see if I can show. Yeah, there we go. You can see the split hem. So I just have it tucked in to my black jeans with a white t-shirt underneath, which is how I like, is one of the ways that I like to style this. Uh, I've been wearing it so much. I've already had to depill it. Um, I actually, when I blocked it, it ended up being too big. The sleeves were like here. And so I frantically was like, can I throw this in the dryer? Is it going to die? Um, and so people are like, you can put it in the dryer, do it for like five minutes at a time, keep an eye on it, make sure that it's doing its thing, do it on low. I did it on like the delicate setting and it ended up shrinking to the perfect size for what I was looking for. Like I wanted the sleeves a little bit long so they kind of come up to the middle of my fingers and yeah I just love this it has a beautiful I-core detail across the back um and I'm just absolutely obsessed with this sweater I'm obsessed with all my sweaters it's very hard to choose what sweater to wear when especially because we had a little bit of a cold snap here in Houston and it was great to be wearing my sweaters in like the appropriate weather. Like having a sweater and a jacket on was just mm, phenomenal. Um, but it's supposed to get colder on Friday. So it will be appropriate weather to wear sweaters again. And I will just be able to wear all of them. And I'm so excited. And I love the cold. I love it so much. And Houston is not the best place if you love the cold. <laughs> it's a little bit hot here in Texas. Um, so yes, that's what I'm wearing. I'm also wearing, let's see if I can show you. I have these incredible socks on. They are my, they're taking the hobbits to Isengard socks. The yarn, that's the name of the yarn is from Tiny Human Knits, which is Laura. 
Um, and you should definitely check out her podcast episodes. They're great. And follow her on Instagram because she makes the most beautiful self-striping yarn. And I'm going to talk about her a little bit later in this episode because uh, I have some more yarn from her. It's very exciting. And yeah, we're... These are just a vanilla sock. I kind of follow my own recipe of uh, 56 stitches, do like 18 rows of ribbing, and then I did 35 rows um, of the, oh no, the heel's 35 rows. I think I did 33 rows uh, between the heel and the cuff, um, but I kind of just went with the stripes, stripe pattern. Um, and I actually was able to get the sock symmetrical, which was very exciting. So that was great. And yeah, these are some of my favorite socks. I love the colors so much. And, uh, I put this when I wrote the caption on Instagram, every time I think about them, I get the song version of they're taking the Hobbits to Isengard stuck in my head, um, which is fun, but also it gets a little bit tiring, but it's also really fun. <laughs> I get things stuck in my head very easily. So that's what I'm wearing. And now we're going to go on to finished objects. So I have two pairs of socks, a single sock, and a hat, a beanie. And yeah, let's just get in that. into that. Let me grab my first finished object. Okay, this is my first finished object. These are another pair of vanilla socks. I am a vanilla sock knitter. I maybe will knit some rib socks in the future, maybe some broken rib socks in the future, but I very much like vanilla socks. I'm not like a lace cable sock knitter at this moment in time. I really just love my vanilla socks. So these are the just again, my recipe of vanilla sock, but this yarn is called Butterfly Kisses and it is by The Whimsical You. I got this at the Dallas Fort Worth Fiber Festival, which happened in September. And it was a sock set that came with the main color, which is the variegated speckly yarn, and then the contrast color, which is the kind of orangey yellow that I did the heel and the toe in. And so this is 75, 25, uh, superwash merino blend. It's 423 meters per 100 grams. And I did, let's see, 56 stitches. I did 18 rows of ribbing. And I did, I do 35, row, 35 rows for the heel, which is a slip stitch heel. And then I knit until they fit my feet. Um, and I love them. I knit the first one almost entirely in the car on the drive to Colorado, which I have a reel of on Instagram if you wanna see my hour by hour progress because I was documenting it to see how much I could knit in a certain amount of time. And I actually, I knit it too long. So I ended up having to frog like 10 rows of the foot before starting the toe. Because I didn't do the toe in the car. I was like, I'm done. Uh, it got dark and I couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> So that is my first finished object, well, finished objects, but it's a pair of socks. So, yeah. My second finished object is a single sock, and it's going to remain a single sock because it does not fit my foot. Um, and I decided it was going to be called a Halloween stocking, and I put candy in it. And it was really fun. So, this is my. Halloween sock. So I took part in uh, Hobie's Helter Skelter DIY challenge for Halloween. And so this yarn was gifted to me by Hobie. And I used the Silly Sock Disco in the color 02, which is neon orange, and 06, which is black. And this is a 75% wool, it's non super wash, and 25% nylon. So for the cuff, I did 64 stitches and then I increased to 72 because this is a pattern I, or a color chart I ended up making myself. 
So there is a similar pattern by Charlotte Stone of Stone Knits and it's called the I'm Batty for Halloween Socks. So if you wanna make a sock like this or a pair of socks like this, please check out her pattern. I'm not sharing mine. Um, it was just for me. I wanted my bats to look a little bit different than hers. And so I just made my own bats. Um, and I did, it was a set of two bat repeats. So I did three sets for the leg and three sets for the foot before doing the toe. And yeah, I, it doesn't fit my foot. I steamed blocked it because I didn't want any of the color to run. And also I was running out of time. And yeah, so that is my Halloween stocking. Uh, I'm probably going to loop some yarn so I can like hang it when Halloween time comes around again next year because it's going to go away until next Halloween. But that's my second finished object. Okay, this is my next finished object. This is a muscle wearer hat. So this is the first muscle wearer I've made and I'm obsessed with it. It's, it doesn't, it kind of goes with the green. It's not Christmassy because of the, the green's darker, I think. But this is my lovely little hat. It is Knit and Explore Knits and Fibers Denali Sock, which is an 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. It has, let's see, 366 meters per 100 grams. And I knit the child adult small size. Um, and my gauge was eight stitches per inch on 2.75 millimeter needles. So this hat has... Like if you don't know this pattern, it's by, it's a pattern by, I think her name is pronounced Isolde Teague. Um, I'm so sorry if I mispronounce that. Pronunciation is something I struggle with. So um, yes, so did I say, I can't remember if I said the name of the yarn. It is called Yaki or Yaki. I'm not sure which one again pronunciation is not my strong suit. So I love this hat. It is um, very tomato soup core, which is um, a, a make along that's happening hosted by um, Emily of, oh, I went out of focus. Um, Emily of High Fiber Knits and Paige of The Knitting Page. And I believe one other person whose name I can't remember right now, um, but it is this just lovely tomato soupy red, um, like super, it's coming off really vibrant on camera, but it's just fantastic. I love it. I'm so excited. I really like statement beanies. I have like a lime green beanie that I also love, um, which is an Oslo hat. Um, but I really like this pattern. I used 102 grams and I have seven grams remaining. So I wanted to use like as much of this yarn as possible. And so as soon as I started getting down to the, to the wire, to the end of the yarn, I decided to do the decreases. And yeah, so if you don't know, this hat is a tube that you fold in itself and then you fold the brim. So it's like, it's super thick, it's great. Very obsessed with it. So super excited to wear this once the weather cools down again, which is coming soon, yay. Okay, and then my last finished object is another pair of socks. These were my birthday cast on, on October 25th, I turned 25. Um, which was very exciting. And I decided to cast on these socks. These are my Kennergy socks, which are called that because the main color yarn is Kennergy by Madeline Tosh. It's on the Twist Light base, which is a 7525. And it's 384 meters per 100 grams. And the contrast color I used, which matches exceptionally well, like, there's the same color green in the Kinergy yarn is not even by Madeline Tosh. It is by Dream and Color and it's their smushy base and the color is Pickleball. It's an 8515 blend of merino and nylon and it's 384 meters per 100 grams. So it's exactly the same weight as the Madeline Tosh. And again, vanilla sock recipe, 
I made these a little bit shorter and they're fresh off the sock blockers today. And I'm super excited to get to wear them and have such a fun pop of color on my feet. So those are all my finished objects and I'm super excited. I am really, my sock mojo right now is like through the roof. Like that is what I want to be knitting. Um, but I do have some other whips that are not socks. So why don't we get into those? So the first whip I have is in my lovely Bagu bag. It is says community and I absolutely love it. It's by Neighborhood Fiber, Fi Neighborhood Fiber Co. Uh, they do have it on their website and it's just an incredible bag. I also got it at the Dallas Fort Worth Fiber Festival from their booth. And so let's grab my whip. This, so this is the Rib Lace Raglan by James N. Watts. And I am knitting a size small because I wanted it to have less positive ease than um, called for in the pattern. Normally I would knit a medium. That's uh, normally the size that I am in knitting patterns for my bust. And I am using Treehouse Knits Dove DK in the color Zephyr. It's 100% merino wool. It's 225 meters per 100 grams. So it's a DK weight yarn. And the pattern actually calls for a fingering or sport weight yarn, but a lot of people have made it with a DK weight to get a thicker, um, less, more opaque fabric, which is what I was looking for. And I got four skeins of this, which is enough to make a long sleeve version of this beautiful top. Um, so I'll insert some footage of the color up close and yeah, so I'm knitting on 3.75 millimeters for the body. And so the sizing for this, it goes from an extra small to a 5XL and it fits a chest circumference of 30 inches to 62 inches. So it is size inclusive, which is awesome. I am really focusing on only knitting size inclusive patterns. I've talked about this last year and I kind of have made some exceptions like Petite knit. So petite knit only grades up to a 59 inch bust, which is one inch short of what the Craft Yarn Council defines as inclusive. And so I'm really trying to move away and not knit petite knit patterns because I really want to focus on being size inclusive. And I think that's super important. It's something I care about. Um, I'm not saying that you have to care about it, but it's something that's important to me. And so I'm moving away from that. And so, yes, it's very exciting. I have kind of put this one on ice because I've been working on socks and I have a test knit that I'm working on that I'll talk about in a second, but I am almost done with the body. I think I am going to knit till I finish this ball of yarn and then I'm going to do the sleeves and then knit the rest of the body, do the eye cord edging on the neck and then I'll have a finished rib lace raglan. So let's put this back in the project bag along with the yarn and just set that aside and I'm going to grab my test knit. Okay, so it doesn't look like much right now. It is just a collar and some short rows. Um, I have not finished the short rows because I've actually been having some pain in my wrists um, when I'm knitting. And so I am trying to rest my hands a little bit. Uh, I don't want to injure myself. And so I'm taking it slow. And so this is the Never Sweater by Kalila of Kopi Kali. Um, she has a channel on YouTube. If you probably have heard of her and her sisters, uh, the Kopi Dolls. And I'm super excited to be testing this. This is her first 
pattern and it's called the never sweater because she once said that she was never going to design anything and here she is having designed this beautiful incredibly oversized sweater so i'm actually knitting this for my mom so i'm knitting a size three um so for me my bust i would be knitting a size four um but my mom's a little bit smaller than i am so this is kelborn world so this is Kelborn Woolens and Dora, which is a 60% merino wool, 20% highland wool, and 20% mohair sport weight yarn. It has 169 meters per 50 grams. So I had to buy a ton of these, but they are not the, it's kind of a middle of the road price it's a little bit pricier than some of their other yarns because I think it is more of a luxury yarn with the mohair in there and it is this beautiful color it is the color stone and I'm super excited about this the pattern actually calls for fingering weight held double but I was able to get gauge with a sport weight because Kalila used two strands of woolly knit which is a light fingering weight yarn and she held that double so it is a little bit of a smaller cage than a dk weight yarn so the sport yarn is working really well for me and so for sizing this goes has 11 sizes goes from 1 to 11. um <laughs> just thinking of spinal tap now um and it is to fit a chest circumference of 29.5 inches to 63 inches and it has 20 to 24 inches of positive ease so it is a really oversized long cozy just hug of a sweater and my mom's super excited to have this um i showed it to her and she was like oh my gosh i want that and i was like cool i'll apply to test knit and i got it um, so I'm using the recommended needles, which is 3.5 for ribbing and four millimeter needles for the body. So that is my second whip and it is the one that has a deadline. It's not due until January. So I do have time to let my wrist heal a little bit. Um, I am able to knit socks because I have a much looser grip when I'm knitting socks. And so it's knitting socks is not hurting, but working on bigger projects um, where I am a little bit of a tighter, I'm, I'm still loosening up, but I am a little still tighter when I'm knitting not socks on nine inch circulars. Um, so let's get into the two pairs of socks that I am working on. I am super excited about them. So. So this was my first acquisition is this Andorra yarn. I got it from uh, the Modern Skein, which is a beautiful yarn shop about 40 minutes from me. My mom and I went out there and we had lunch and it was quite nice. It's in Old Town Montgomery, I believe is where it is. And so let's talk about this. I have this in my beautiful Lilana New, L I always mess it up, Lilana Lou project bag that I got at uh, the Lilana Lou store in Barcelona last year. So I've barely started these. I started them to try and see if the wrist pain would go away knitting socks. And because this is such a thick yarn and such a thick, it's a worsted weight sock, um, it was still hurting my wrist a little bit. So I have not gotten very far. So right now I just have, uh, part of the cuff. And this is the, is going to be the camp socks by Ozetta, which is Haley Smedley. And I have made these socks two times before. This was actually the first knitting pattern that I ever followed. Um, and I love these socks. I knit a pair kind of around the anniversary of when I first knit them kind of as a way to show how much I grew over my first year of knitting. And so I decided to make another pair to commemorate the second year of knitting. So I am using Durer Natura Gilead in the color Cacao. And this sock has two sizes, I'm knitting size one. And you use, 
I think, let me, it's a US size five, uh, which is 3.75 millimeters. And I have these little nine inch circulars that I'm using. And I, this was another acquisition. This is actually from La Mercerie, which is, you probably know, they're the store that organized Flock Festival. Uh, they're in Bainbridge Island in Washington. And I originally ordered this yarn thinking it was a DK weight yarn. It is not, it's worsted. And I was gonna use this for the Never Sweater. Um, and so I opened one ball to swatch and I obviously didn't get gauge because it's a light DK and this is worsted. So I was like, well, I have one skein because I can't return the one that I used, obviously. So I returned the rest of the balls of yarn, but I kept this one and decided to make a pair of camp socks out of it. It's this gorgeous kind of perp, almost, it's a brown, but it kind of has some purple undertones. Uh, I think it's hard to see against this dark sweater. Um, but that is my first sock whip. And then my second sock whip, I started this morning, which I already mentioned. It is in this project bag, which is my favorite sock bag. And I just have part of the cuff again. Um, so this is some more Tiny Human Knits yarn, and it is the 1989 Taylor's version yarn. So if you've seen the limited edition vinyls, each different color has a different cover. And on the cover of the yellow limited edition vinyl, she was wearing a gorgeous sweater that is these colors. And so Laura dyed up sock yarn that matches the sweater and I just absolutely became obsessed with it. And it's actually a funny story. So, and this is the main color. And then it comes with a contrasting mini in this kind of tan, beautiful color to go as the heel and the toe. And so funny story is the yarn was supposed to arrive almost two weeks ago and it didn't. And I was like, where is this yarn? It was showing that it was out for delivery, but that it was waiting to be scanned for delivery. So it wasn't delivered anywhere. So I ended up having to go to the post office and being like, hey, where's this package? And they're like, we don't know, we'll try to find it. And they tried to find it a couple of times and they called me and they're like, yep, it's lost. They sent me an email saying it was lost to um, just in case I needed that for anything. And it arrived yesterday and my mom went and checked the mail this morning and she found the package and she was so excited to like <laughs> give it to me when I woke up. She was like, look what you got, it's here. And I was like, oh my gosh. So exciting. I got the yarn and I cannot wait to have these socks. I actually ordered the yellow vinyl because I was obsessed with the sweater and the yellow is just gorgeous. So that is on its way currently and I'm very excited about it. Those are my whips. So now let's get into acquisitions. I actually need to grab my first acquisition. So let me go get it. First acquisition, uh, I mean, I've already showed you a couple of acquisitions. So I was graciously from some of my family given some money and gift cards um, for my birthday. And so this is special birthday yarn. And I have two skeins of the Les Garcons Hand Dyed Fluff, which is a sport weight yarn. And it is 55% baby alpaca, 18% fine merino wool, 17% mulberry silk, 10% yak. And then it says 100% dreamy. So I have two skeins of this cause that's all they had. I would have gotten three um, just so I had a little bit more options of what to make. But I was talking with the very kind woman who was working at the Modern Skein, which is where I got these two. And she mentioned the, where is it? The Wisp Tank by Caitlin Hunter, who's also Broilin Knitworks. Um, and so it is a beautiful tank top that uses fingering weight, 
mohair, but the sport weight will work and I have enough to make it. And I will probably end up wearing it as a vest because that is actually how it's styled in some pages on Ravelry. And I really love that. I think a fluffy vest will be great for the winter. And I just love this color. It's called Lavender Tea. And it's just... It's so soft, like a hat out of this would also be wonderful, but I want something I can wear a little bit more uh, throughout the year than a hat. So acquisition number one, it's a fluffy I'm gonna die. I used to be obsessed with Despicable Me and my text tone was Agnes saying, it's so fluffy I'm gonna die, uh, which got annoying pretty quickly, but I loved it and I call my, I call Ripley my dog little girl in a group in a groove voice. <laughs> Learning fun things, little tidbits about me. I'm I'm ridiculous, but it's fun. So, um, yeah, it's so soft. Cool. That's acquisition number one other than what I already showed you. Number two is actually another Tiny Human Knits yarn, which Laura kindly gifted to me. Um, she sent it in my package with the Taylor Swift yarn, and it is uh, 50 grams of her sock yarn, which is a two-ply. I can't remember if I said that. And I cannot, I'm not gonna try to pronounce the name of this yarn. I'm going to put it on the screen and it is based off artwork by, I don't know how to say his name and I don't really want to butcher it. So again, I will put it here and I'll insert a picture of the piece that it is inspired by. So you can kind of see what the colorway came from because Laura's inspiration is incredible. I'm like gushing, <laughs> but I just love her yarn so much. And she makes these beautiful colors and it's great. Um, and I'm excited to see what she does in the future because everything she shows on her Instagram is just incredible. And I wish I could buy all of it. Um, so that's my second acquisition. And it was again, kindly, kindly given to me. And I'm so excited to make a pair of socks out of it. So last acquisition is also some more gifted yarn from Hobie. Let me grab it. So I am a part of their Christmas campaign, which is Candyland DIY. And so I got these beautiful colors of Friends Wool, which is 100% wool, comes in 50 gram balls, and it's 50 grams is 100 meters. I have color 109, which I believe is olive. I have color two, which I think is cream. And then color 40, and I can't remember the name of this color. It's like vibrant red or something like that. And so I am going to be making the Jolly Stocking Cap by Church Mouse Yarns and Teeds. And it's gonna be a Christmas present for my dad. I have never knit my dad anything because what he wants is very specific. I'm still trying to find a pattern for it and he wants it in cashmere. And so I haven't wanted to knit with cashmere until I'm absolutely certain that it's going to turn out great because it is such an expensive yarn and I don't want to mess it up. So he has not gotten any sweaters yet but he's gonna get a jolly stocking cap for him to wear on Christmas. I'm gonna put it in his stocking so he can wear it while we're opening presents because we all wear fun Christmas hats, uh, which is a tradition in our house. Um, so I'm excited about that. And there is a, a giveaway that goes along with this challenge and you can, it's an Instagram campaign, so it's not a YouTube campaign. So you can check out the hashtags uh, Hobie Candyland and Hobie Candyland DIY. And yeah, I'm very excited to make this for my dad. Um, yeah, he deserves something. He's so knitworthy. 
and I'm hoping it will be a great surprise for him. I gotta go measure one of his hats to know what size to make, um, but that's my plan for these. So that's all the knitting. I, um, I actually have started spinning. I'm not gonna talk about that today. I probably will make another video talking about that um, because I'm having a lot of fun with it. I have a bunch of tiny skeins that I've made. They're super uneven. I'm getting better at drafting. I have a drop spindle. And again, I'm gonna talk about that more in a different video. So I wanna talk a little bit about media recommendations, what I've been watching, what I've been reading, and I am having so much fun re-watching some shows. So I'm gonna start with books. So I have two that I'm currently reading. One of them I started and I have now put it down because the other book was released. So the first one I'm reading is called The Secret History. It's by Donna Tart. And this was actually recommended by Hannah of Pages and Pearls who is here on YouTube and on Instagram um, because I read the book If We Were Villains, which is a very similar concept to this. And so Hannah recommended this because I loved If We Were Villains. It was fantastic. And so I have started this. It is very similar, but I'm excited to see what happens. And this one actually, this one came out first. So this is the, the first um, and they're by different authors, um, but I'm excited to see what happens, but I'm gonna finish my other book that I'm about to talk about before I get back to this one. So, if you're on Book Talk, you're, you're gonna know this book. So, I'm reading Iron Flame. It got released yesterday. Today is the 8th of November. So it got released on the 7th. I pre-ordered my copy. So I got the like special edition with the black sprayed edges, the beautiful hardcover. And I started it last night. I read, let's see, I think about, I read 50 pages. So I finished chapter six uh, through chapter six. So I'm on chapter seven. Um, this book is thick. Like she's thick with like a ton of C's. Um, uh, <laughs> but, uh, this is the sequel to the book Fourth Wing, which is, uh, it is about a war college and dragon riders, and it's a little bit, I found Fourth Wing a little bit predictable, but I really enjoyed it. So I'm super excited to read Iron Flame and see where that goes. I think if you like the Akatar series, uh, and that kind of world, then you will really enjoy these. Um, obviously, I don't know how this one's going to turn out, um, but I'm excited to see what happens. And I'm just obsessed with how this looks. I also got the, let me grab it, the limited edition copy of Fourth Wing. <laughs> So I, uh, it has the black sprayed edges, it has a new cover, and it is just gorgeous. And I think they look so good together. The colors are just great. So I can't wait to have both of these. This one has two extra chapters from the uh, main male character's POV, uh, which I haven't read yet, but I probably should. So um, I've finished this in like August or September. Uh, and anxiously awaited book number two. So that's the books I've been reading. So now let's talk about the TV shows. I have been re-watching three shows. I have not been watching anything new. Um, so I, at the beginning of October, I re-watched season one of Our Flag Means Death, uh, which I absolutely love. Uh, Taika Waititi is one of my favorite, like, He's one of my favorite directors. He's the, not the director of the show, he's acting in it, um, but he plays Blackbeard and he's incredible. I just, I love him. He's a great actor, great director. He's one of my favorites. Uh, his film Jojo Rabbit is one of my absolute favorite movies. Um, and they're just, they're great. He has a new one coming out. I'm very excited and Michael Fassbender is in it and I love Michael Fassbender. So, uh, then I watched season two of Our Flag Means Death, which was also incredible. 
Uh, it was only eight episodes. The first season was 10 and I thought it was going to be 10. And I watched episode seven and I was like, this is wrapping up. And then there were only eight episodes, which is very sad. But it uh, season three is happening. So we'll anxiously await that. I am also rewatching Gilmore Girls. So I have watched it through once before. And I was, my mom and I, I live with my parents. And so I watch a lot of TV with them. And my mom and I were looking for something to watch. And I was like, why don't we watch Gilmore Girls? She's never seen it. And I love it so much. It's just a great show. The mother-daughter relationship is great. So I really am enjoying watching it with my mom. And it's, I remember like the big things that happened, but like the minutia and the little things that happened, I don't really remember. So um, I'm excited to rewatch it. The knitwear, people make videos about the knitwear in Gilmore Girls. Like I've seen three or four, um, but the episode I watched the other day, Lorelai had on a knit beanie that had like Yetis on it. It was ridiculous and I was obsessed with it. Um, so the knitwear is great. It's just kind of a cozy, it feels very fall, even though it goes through different seasons. Um, but yeah, I've been watching that with my mom. And the last show that I have been re-watching I started rewatching on Saturday and I'm already to the new season. So I rewatched season one and two of The Witcher because I started season three and I was like, I don't remember how we got to where we are. So I was like, I'll just rewatch season one and two, start season three, which is not supposed to be a great season, but I'm still gonna watch it because I wanna know what happens. I really enjoy it. It's a fun watch. Uh, it's pretty gory, but I don't mind gore. I. I <laughs> I started watching The Walking Dead in seventh grade and so like I am pretty desensitized to gore and television shows because that one was a pretty bloody show um which I never actually finished watching because I just got so tired of Rick I was like I want Rick to die um which is a little bit harsh but I just got super annoyed with his character um so yeah that's everything I have for you guys. I'm super excited to get this video done and edited. And the main reason that I didn't, I filmed two videos in October actually, and I was gonna edit them, but I was actually doing editing as a job. Like I was editing um, some interview shows that I, was part of the team filming in June and we had to get those edited. And so I was editing for work and I just had no desire to edit the videos that I filmed because I had been editing so much. So those videos are just gonna be lost to the ether. Um, like I filmed a podcast for my August and September knits. And I filmed a haul from the Dallas Fort Worth Fiber Festival, but I kind of showed you guys a lot of that today. So they're just lost to the ether, never to be seen again. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. If you made it this far, thank you for being here. Um, if you want to stay up to date with what I'm doing, you can follow me at popsicle underscore frog on Instagram. And on Ravelry, I am popsicle dash frog. And um, also, if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing, liking it. Um, it really helps me out. And I also, I love interacting with people in the comments. I have anxiety over replying to things. So it takes me a little while, but I really love hearing what you guys are making, what you've been up to, uh, what your plans are for the future. So if you wanna share those, please do. I will love to see them. And I, yeah, thank you for being here and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.